Painted at the height of Caravaggio's fame, this is among his most impressive domestic religious pictures, and perhaps his most famous. It was commissioned from him in 1601 and now hangs in the National Gallery. Caravaggio captures the dramatic climax of the story, the moment of revelation when the disciples suddenly see what has been in front of them all along. Their actions convey their astonishment. One is about to leap out of his chair his elbow jutting out towards us, while the other throws out his arms in a gesture of disbelief. Typically for Caravaggio, he has shown the disciples as ordinary working men, with bearded, lined faces and ragged clothes, in contrast to the youthful beardless Christ who, with his flowing locks and rich red tunic, seems quite literally to have come from a different world. Although the picture seems to capture a fleeting moment, it is nevertheless carefully staged. The artist uses contrasts of light and shade to heighten the drama. A strong light from the left falls on the faces of Christ and the disciple on the right. It casts a shadow on the blank wall behind Christ, almost like a reverse halo, and illuminates the hand which the disciple thrusts towards the viewer. The geometric structure which underlies the composition helps guide our eye around the picture. The back view of the disciple on the left, thought to be Cleophas, and the other disciples' outstretched arms act like tram lines focusing our attention on Christ's serene face. He and the disciples form an inward-facing triangle, united in the moment of miraculous revelation. Unmoved and standing outside it is the innkeeper. His thumbs are tucked into his belt and he looks on impassively with his face in shadow, implying that he has not yet seen the light, a metaphor for spiritual understanding. He sees, and yet he does not perceive. The same light illuminates the astonishingly detailed and realistic still life laid out on the crisp white tablecloth, loaves of rustic bread, a chicken, and a basket of fruit teetering dangerously on the edge of the table. Closer comparison between Luke's account and Caravaggio's interpretation reveals a sequential and temporal disconnect. In the Gospel, after taking the bread, Jesus blesses it, breaks it, and hands it to the disciples. Only after all four actions are the disciples able to recognize the risen Christ, after which he immediately vanishes. In Caravaggio's picture, the disciples' abrupt physical reactions of surprise, arms thrown open, chair hastily pushed back, eyebrows raised, brows furrowed, and gazes wrapped, suggest their eyes have indeed been opened. But what do they see that incites this upheaval? The beardless Christ, whose features Caravaggio subtly altered from conventional depictions of the time to account either for his unrecognizability or to honor the exquisiteness of his risen body, raises his hands in a gesture of blessing over the unbroken bread before him. How then can they have recognized him already? The loaf is cleverly concealed behind the roasted fowl painted in the same palette which makes the viewer work to distinguish between the bird, the bread, and the hand. We have to take a moment to pick out the bread and wine before the significance of this meal becomes clear. The Eucharistic body, just like the risen body, is concealed and yet revealed. Together, all of these elements serve as a pictorial meditation on the dialectic between the visible and invisible. Caravaggio presents us with a scene which is both familiar and startling, so that the viewer sees what the disciples have just seen, that this is Christ, but might also see why they could have overlooked what was right in front of them until this moment. In Caravaggio's painting, the viewer stands on the fourth side of the table at which Christ is sitting with the two disciples. The painting breaks into the viewer's space with surprising ease. Christ's right hand draws the viewer forward, the outstretched arms of the disciple on the right reach out to the viewer and form a bridge between them and Christ. The chair of the disciple on the left is pushed backwards into the viewer's space as the disciple starts forward. Even the basket of fruit seems like it is about to topple to the floor. All these things pull the viewer in, inviting him to the communion table to be alongside the disciples as their eyes are opened. Please pause the video now 
so you can continue looking at the painting as you discuss your next set of questions.